So from, from your own perspective, you were contacted before you were added on this board. Am I correct to say that? Yes. yes. Okay. So meaning, if I want to conclude, I would think every other person that, is, that their name is on this board was also contacted. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to be moving on the part of now we have a united front. Kapoor has decided to endorse Kapak. How is that union working out? Um, basically, uh, Kapak, as I already explained, is a public affairs committee. It's, it's essentially a, a civil society organization created as a non-profit hmm? organization and the whole idea was for it not to have a the element of a political faction so rather than so when the idea came we, I, I think the, the, the founding fathers of this idea wanted to actually affiliate Scapa with Morris okay because Morris was uh, coming up at the time as well, and at the time sounded like a uh, a reasonable uh, 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 partner to work with. <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, as a United Front. But for some reason, uh, Skypark decided uh, the founding father decided to affiliate uh, with a consortium which had uh, the connection with people on the ground. But in terms of how it works, basically, uh, SCAPAC is just is just made up of the board members. And these board members are decided by SCACO. So that's how, so any decision, so SCACO can decide to replace me as the chairman of the board. So every decision that the board takes is a decision that is loyal to SCACO. And the way it functions is that for funds to be disbursed from SCAPAC, a request, a project request has to come from SCACO through the secretariat. I think going forward is going to be coming from uh, wherever, uh, uh, whichever way the new governing council decides. But before, so far until now, uh, requests used to usually come from the secretariat about a project. Then once we get that request, we, the, the board votes on it before any money is disbursed. And it's written, uh, uh, money is disbursed only by check. And that is given, that check is written to a staff of, uh, representative in the United States, and that money gets transferred. We get a receipt and put it uh, uh, on file because CAPAC can be audited by the IRS Anytime. IRS, for those who are not uh, familiar with the United States, means the Internal Revenue Services. So uh, every single dime in and out is accounted for. Okay. And every decision to take out any money is decide, is made by SCACO. Okay. I think um, we, we, we are live on Facebook, so I will just try to remind a few viewers who are just on, to know that Dr. Julia Stabber, the one I'm interviewing right now, is the chairman of the SCAPAC board, is not the chairman of the SCACUF governing council. There's Dr. Julia Stabber, I repeat, is the chairman of the SCAPAC board, but we will have Mr. Julius Seseko Tabe another time. He is the chairman of the governing council. I just thought I remind our viewers. And today we are talking everything SCAPAC and everything lawsuits. Um, no question here. I don't ask no questions that he will answer straight. We'll be asking him tough questions. We'll be clearing rumors. That's on Facebook. And we will delve into the issue of the lawsuit that many people want to know. For a while, nothing has been said about the lawsuit. And there's been lots of rumors rumor out there saying is the law really still there or is gone so he is here um, to answer all the questions so I'm going to dive into my next question and this question will be 
the new um, governing uh, body that has been created by Skakuf, and now we have a chairman. How is this new chairman welcoming Skapak? And has he indicated that he's still going to work with you guys? Or if he wakes up tomorrow and said, I don't like Skapak, I want to scrap it. What would you say to that? Uh, so far, we have had communications <coughs> with the new uh, governing council, the three members, uh, Sesiko Julius Tabe, uh, Mr. Wilfred Kassang, and Mr. Mil Milan Atam. Uh, these are all uh, believers of the concept of SCAPAC, and uh, they are updated on every uh, actions or uh, initiative that uh, is going on uh, with SCAPAC. And I do not uh, see any scenario where they will want to scrap it. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go now on the side of Citizens Levy. And please answer the questions as they come or if you think the question is not directed to you please feel free to say so i'm going to ask you on the aspect of citizens levy how many people can you tell us have registered and are paying their citizens levy uh Skapak does not manage the website uh so i am not privy to that information uh if i had like uh, prior no knowledge of these questions, I would have maybe contacted the webmaster for the, for Skaku, but uh, but I encourage you to to invite invite the webmaster to to give us details on on uh, not the number of people registered. Uh, but what the only thing we see in our end is the money that comes in. Okay. Uh, not we don't know the registration or details about uh, the people who uh, who have signed up. Okay, if you say you see the money that comes in, clearly money speaks for itself. If you have lots of money coming in, you should know that lots of people are registering. And, and likewise, if you don't see the amount of money you expect, you also know that people are not registering. So if I want to ask you this question. What sort of what amount of money do you receive? Let's say per day, per week, per month, and are you encouraged with the amount of money that is coming in? Yeah, I want to start by saying uh, we are not encouraged. Um, the the amount of energy and enthusiasm towards this struggle by the people of Saudi Cameroon is not really reflected in the total collections. Um, I think roughly so far from the creation of the website and now, um, my best guess is uh, approximately uh, $100,000 in total collections. Then, uh, I, this is way below expectation. I expected by now we should be in the millions of dollars. Uh, if they are about... Uh, 8 million Southern Cameroonians and uh, maybe 50% uh, uh, of them are adults or more who should be able to contribute $20 a, a month. And if we have that, we should be uh, in the millions of dollars. So definitely, uh, I am not encouraged uh, on that aspect. I understand um, they have, there has been a lot of negative uh, campaign uh, against Kapak and Skaku relationship, which is very unfortunate because in this struggle, uh, we have to encourage people fighting in different ways. So if anybody has an idea coming up, I don't understand why some Saudi Cameroonians spend too much energy trying to discredit one effort. If you are a Morris member, for example, it's better for you to spend your energy 
telling the people what Morris is doing than spending energy to bring down Scapa. So it just doesn't make sense. But this is the negative energy that is there, which I think is affecting the collections. But I think as time goes on, people see the credibility of the organization and how the money is managed, then uh, things will uh, be fine. I, I, I'm still coming in, in that question. Uh, I believe most of the organizations out there now, uh, AGC, uh, uh, NCY, uh, Morris, uh, these organizations have been collecting money. And they are, I think the accounts of this organization are managed by individuals. So it is very possible that these people are so uh, uh, committed to fight against the United Front because they don't want to lose control of money that they can just take and use any time. Because with CAPAC, you can't get that. It's a group decision based on a vote after a request from SCAPO. So there is no room for embezzlement or misdirection, misappropriation of funds. But I'm not going to accuse anybody for that, but I'm just speaking out there to uh, the leaders of the other organizations and their followers. It is good to focus your energy on what your own strategy is towards this goal of freedom rather than trying to tear down the strategy of your compatriots. Now, in terms of, uh, I'll go back to the collection. So I said approximately $100,000 in collections. Uh, then in terms of the checks we have written out, uh, so far I think the $35,000 for return of the for Poly Hall, uh, we have made a few payments uh, to SCACOF, uh, to assist refugees, uh, probably uh, in the total of maybe uh, uh, ten to fifteen thousand. I don't have the exact numbers. Uh, Skapak has uh, written uh, about ninety-five, uh, nine thousand five hundred dollars uh, to support uh, to pay LCT uh, satellite uh, uh, fees. Mm -hmm. Um, we have uh, supported the trips of uh, some uh, uh, compatriots coming here uh, to attend uh, the signing, who came here to us attend the signing uh, of the retainer agreement. So, uh, in give or take, I don't, the, the, the balance, uh, the last time I spoke with the uh, treasurer, uh, about a week ago or so, uh, I don't think uh, we have anything more than $30,000 in the coffers, probably less than that. So I think I encourage people to sign up and uh, make their payments, support this movement. Uh, all people can uh, remain in for it Okay, I'll just start um, by just reiterating a few points to our viewers that Papak has received about close to a hundred thousand pounds in his coffers. He has paid the 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 retainer fee. For for the fully hawk, they paid transport to some um, compatriots that went for the signing for fully hawks. They paid some transport to those. So, like I, I remember, I was told the transport was paid um, to the chairman and the spokesperson to go to the conclave, and they have paid the SCBC TV. So, right now, all that is left in the account is around thirty thousand dollars which is not enough As if we want to pay the tv and pay every other thing the money cannot take us anywhere so we i want to talk to the romans what is it that is stopping people not contributing to this um as capac i want to start by talking about uh, bo herbert i know bo herbert has said it live 
everywhere that Skapak is a sham, Skapak is fake. I want you, being the chairman of Skapak, to tell us why does Bo Herbert think Skapak is sham? And what can you tell the viewers to believe that Bo Herbert's insinuations are not right and that they should believe in Skapak and they should pay their citizens' levy and pay all other contribution that goes directly to Skapak? Well, um, it, it, is, it is not up to me to explain why Bo Herbert is doing what he's doing. Uh, I can only explain what SCAPAC is and how transparent uh, uh, SCAPAC is uh, from its foundation, from the way it functions, and SCAPAC's CACU relationship. Uh, and that SCAPAC has been adopted as a treasurer for the organization. Uh, a lot of people have seen the actions of Bo Herbert and Morris over the past uh, few months, and they can make they, they can judge for themselves. And I know a lot of people are asking questions: uh, Is Bo Herbert and Mo, are they really fighting the same fight as us, or they're fighting a different war? Uh, because the only thing they do is attack Skakuf and other organizations. So I think I encourage you to invite Bo Herbert to uh, provide evidence of why he thinks uh, Skapak is a scam. But I'm not, I'm not inside his brain to explain to people what, what he's thinking. Okay. Thank you very much. I think Bo Herbert can hear this and hear it cloud, um, loud and clear that Bo, if you still hold the opinion that Skapak is a sham and is fake, please, I would like you to come on this platform. You know my Facebook page. Contact me or I will contact you. I would love you, Bo, to come on air and tell us why you think Skapak is a sham so we could all educate ourselves. We are in this struggle to learn and to move forward. I am here with Bo Dr. Um, Julius Tabe, the chairperson of SCAPAC board, not the the chairman of the governing council. Yeah, the, chairman, I the chairman of the governing council is Sesekou Julius Ayok Tabe. Exactly. I'm Julius Tanyi Tabe. Thank you. No so, relationship, just a name coincidence. Okay, so if you want to be a chairman in anything, you just need to bell Julius Stabe. I think he yeah. opens doors, he gives you chairman title. <laughs> it's just a joke, man. <laughs> but I'm going to dive into the questions now on the lawsuit. <laughs> it's just a joke, man. I will come to the questions of the lawsuit because there's a lot of questions around it. But before I go to the questions of the lawsuit, I'm going to ask you the final question on, on SCAPAC. Why is it important, from your opinion, for people to pay their citizens' levy? How important is this to this struggle? It is very critical. Without money, it is going to be near impossible to achieve freedom. I just cited all of these things that we need to finance, all the projects, including taking care of our refugees uh, uh, in Nigeria. So anybody who wants SCBC to stay on, need to give their money. Anybody who wants the governing council to function properly, needs to support and pay their citizenship level. Anybody who cares about the sufferings of our prisoners because some, some of the requests for finances have come for uh, food for the prisoners. Pay for the, this is where the, all this money comes to that account and SCAPAC makes the request and that's how the money is dispersed. So this SCAPAC is the treasury for Southern Cameroons right now. Anybody who wants to support this movement should sign up, pay the assistance levy, and leave the rest for the governing council to take us to board. Thank you very much, Mr. Julius. I think we can't stress the importance of paying citizens' levy.
like a citizen's task attack if I want to add my voice to it. Um, in every country we live, we pay tax. There is a purpose that people pay tax. is one, to be identified. Two, to pay for services that are needed. In the situation where we are, we are fighting for our freedom. There's no amount of... I think we've done the history 101 that we needed to know about this struggle. We've finished all of that. We can't have money or we can't push this struggle forward. Enough of the talking on Facebook is about to donate, donate, and keep donating. It's only money that can facilitate us or can make it easier for us to see in the shortest possible time. To move on the topic, I know everyone is interested. The, the lawsuit, or I don't know, the lawsuit, Oh, I don't know whether they are just there as lobbying. I'm also here to also educate myself about what SCAPAC is doing in terms of the lawsuit and ask all the questions in, on Facebook. And one question I'm going to ask is that, Dr. Julia, is there actually a lawsuit still going on? No, there has, there has never been a lawsuit. And there is no lawsuit. So, SCAPAC, as I said, is a public affairs committee created to lobby no. for the restoration of the independence of Southern Cameroon. Uh, there are two aspects in our approach, diplomatic and legal, and they are kind of intertwined. We have engaged in the diplomatic offensive first. At some point, there may be a lawsuit but we can actually achieve independence without needing a lawsuit. Our central focus right now is to make the freedom of Southern Cameroon part of the U.S. foreign policy. And that means lobbying the United States government and all the international uh, bodies that matter. We are already taking off in this effort. Uh, we have a meeting uh, already scheduled this week in New York with Amnesty International. I cannot reveal dates. Uh, we already have the State Department uh, uh, accepting uh, to meet uh, with uh, representatives of Southern Cameroon. Uh, we are still trying to nail down uh, a date for that. And there are a series of other meetings coming up. Uh, there are also uh, different levels of the United States government that uh, we will be meeting uh, over the next uh, few weeks to months. And uh, there are some details in our dif diplomatic offensive that I cannot release uh, uh, to the public because, I mean, you don't, La Republic is out there listening to us and uh, you don't reveal strategy uh, that much. But this is. What we have engaged in now is a diplomatic offensive. Uh, a lawsuit, or, I mean, the, the whole idea of lawsuit was actually uh, put out there uh, mostly by the detractors. Uh, as I said, a lawsuit can be part of this, but right now we have not filed any lawsuit because we think the diplomatic route will be faster and we may not even need the lawsuit, a legal route like filing a lawsuit at the ICJ, which is very time consuming and actually very expensive. Okay. So I just want us to have this clear because I heard one of the leaders saying clearly on air that there is no lawsuit, that Kakuv is lying to people. They've, called, they've taken their money and they said there is a lawsuit. There's actually no lawsuit going on. So what you're telling me today, and I want the viewers to hear it clear, that there is a, a diplomatic offensive. That is what we paid the retainer fee for, but not we did not pay for a lawsuit. Is that what it is? Please, can you clarify this too? Because I think yes. I don't want the viewers to leave here thinking there is no lawsuit at all. There's uh -huh. no there's, we, no there's no retainer. Just make it clear so we all go home with a sound. So we we retain fully half for their services, okay. which include legal, 
diplomatic aspect. The retainer fee is for their services. It is not uh, split into different things that they can do. When you, hi when you hire a representative, a lawyer or an advocate, you present your problem, then let them propose the solution because that's why you went to them, the experts. So uh, the retainer fee is actually not money that we were paid them. Mm -hmm. The retainer fee is a, it's a fee that we give them to put in an escrow account. So an escrow account basically guarantees them that there's money for their services. But they cannot take that money without our authority. So uh, when they perform any service, they give a statement of what has been done. And we know this and this amount will be taken out of that S of that money. So that retainer fee is there. Uh, so far, we have received a, a statement uh, of uh, about 600, uh, and that was for, uh, I think that was for setting up uh, the initial services that were, were done. Uh, and after that, the different meetings we have we had we have had a few meetings, uh, video conferences, and they are working now on uh, these uh, diplomatic offensives. And of course, we will be expecting to get another statement uh, of services. But this money is there. Uh, it's not like all the thirty-five thousand is gone uh, in the account. No, it's in an escrow account, which is a protected account uh, that. They perform a service, they send out a, like a bill, they agree that, okay, we approve this bill, or if we don't agree, we negotiate the bill, then we cut it down and say, okay, this amount is what we know is going to be taken out of that account. But our own account, like SCAPAC account, is us. We use this account uh, for the services that I already uh, explained to you, like paying the bills of... Uh, uh, the uh, different groups feeding the prisoners, taking care of the refugees. And again, I must specify that uh, decision to release any money comes through a vote after request for project by SCAP. Okay. So on the side of this lawsuit, if I want to explain what I understand, so my viewers will understand exactly what you're saying, is that there was a retainer fee that was signed off. The, the day it was signed off, it wasn't actually handed to Foley Hawk and say, this is $35,000, here you go, run with it. No, yeah. but it was actually kept in the coffers where whatever services they do, they give you a statement and they take, let's say, a hundred dollars. You go in there, you take a hundred dollars, and three thirty four thousand nine hundred dollars is still in there exactly. as you go. So, if I want to ask you a question, back, how much money do you think they've taken so far from that thirty five thousand dollars for the services that they've rendered us? And can you be, if you can tell us, what services have they rendered? to merit them this amount of money they've taken. So this is a two-part question. Yes. How much money can you tell us that has been, t has been taken out of the 35,000 bank account money and what services have they rendered to merit them get that amount of money? Yeah, they have uh, I think we have received just one statement of $3,600 uh, so that is what has been taken from that account as of date but uh, the initial services was uh, for uh, creation of SCAPAC and also all the uh, meetings and uh, video conferences and all the uh, uh, documentation that uh, they have prepared uh, to uh, uh, target these different uh, organizations, uh, different levels of government at the United, uh, different levels of the U.S. government. 
Okay. Um, I'll just want to, to, before I ask the next question, I want to bring the viewers in this discussion because I know it's something they want to be part of and they love to. Can people please drop your questions in the comment section? I will take a few questions to the chairman. So keep writing your questions. If I don't see them, I will pick them later on. Just write the question. Please make it brief so I can see it and I'll ask it to the chairman. This is the chairman of the SCAPAC board and not the chairman of the governing council um, he's here to answer all questions capac and all question fully hawk so the lawsuit so he's told us today that there is no lawsuit we are pl we are playing a diplomatic offensive and I want to throw the question back to him do we really need a lawsuit to sue la republic for all the damages or the losses we've incurred in the course of this struggle Uh, the the last there is not much. Mm. You, you hear me? Yeah. What? Excuse me. Yeah. Yes. So a a lawsuit may be needed or may not be needed right now. For example, if if we have a judgment at the International Court of Justice that the Republic is illegally occupying our territory. The ICJ does not have the means to enforce that. So it still has to fall back to the political and diplomatic efforts to muscle them out of our territory. Uh, they may, they, that could help. That could help. For example, that is the case uh, of uh, uh, East Timor. East Timor uh, was colonized by the Portuguese uh, and after the poor, uh, it's, a, it's a small uh, territory uh, neighboring to Indo Indonesia. So uh, they were lucky that their colonial masters, the Portuguese, were interested to make sure they are free. So when the Portuguese pulled out, the, the government of Indonesia walked in and occupy their territory, claiming that it belongs to them, just as La Republic walked into Saudi Comoros. And they resisted, and the government, the Portuguese government, uh, helped them to file a lawsuit at the ICJ. The ICJ made that ruling that the, the, the Indonesian government does not have any jurisdiction in their territory, and they used that judgment to help their diplomatic offensive. Now, because we don't have that much resources, if we had million dollars in the coffers, we'd probably attack both sides, file a suit, get, let that be going at the ICJ, then do the diplomatic offensive. But we are kind of prioritizing now. Okay. Do we go both or do we do the diplomatic offensive first? Then at some point, even if we succeed diplomatically uh, to to get our country back, we may still need to file a lawsuit against the Republic to claim everything they extorted from us. So uh, let me go back and say we have that option to do uh, because the ICJ is the highest jurisdiction uh, that we have to sue the Republic uh, on territorial grounds. Uh, in terms of speaking of international litigation, uh, and we have that option. So we have the diplomatic and legal option. We can do both. We have the means to do it, but if you want to prioritize the diplomatic offensive is better. And this is the reasoning and the advice from our legal representation uh, or our lobbying firm. Once we make the freedom of Saudi Cameroons a U.S. foreign policy, it will be easy from there. And Saudi Cameroonians have the intellectual capital in the United States and across the West to make that happen. Okay. So we have started that. Since this struggle started 56 years ago, I don't think we'll have the leverage we have now to make these things happen. So we are... Because... All they talk about the torture, the discrimination, marginalization has been limited 
to our community. Okay. The world out there doesn't know about it. And if people don't know about it, nothing really happens. Because the way the Western society functions is they have government of the people. If the people don't talk about it, nothing is done about it. Saudi Sudanese fought for over two decades. And it was only after they realized we need to do something. We need to find a way for the international community to listen to us when they engaged Foley Hawk. And Foley Hawk helped them through that process to lobby and make the freedom of Saudi Sudan a U.S. foreign policy. And through that leverage, they were able to influence the United Nations to create a commission for referendum. It is not the war that forced Omar El Bashir to grant the referendum, no. It is true lobbying at higher levels of the UN and the US government. That is the same approach we are taking. And I think so far we are on a good start. Okay, so uh, everyone now should hear there is no lawsuit for now, not that we can't do it. There is a choice. We have the diplomatic offensive and we have the lawsuit. And to do both, we need money. Because there is no money, we've decided to choose the best option for now, which is diplomatic offenses, which incorporate lobbying. And through this lobbying, we are hoping that they will push the UN to push La Republic to probably give us a referendum and we can vote to leave like we all know no matter how much war you fight it ends up diplomatic war. and if, if i want to ask this question people are saying okay, that why did they lie to us that there was a lawsuit when there wasn't was it a lie or was it a misconception please can you clarify that it could have been a misunderstanding because at the time the level of communication uh, between Skapak and Skakov was not that as developed as now. Even knowing the people and talking to them personally, it was just it was difficult to convey that information. So once the initial uh, contact with Polyhawk came through and us and Polyhawk being a law firm, everybody just had that idea that it's a lawsuit, which is not really a lie because, as I said, if we have the, the means financially, we'll attack the two law, lawsuit, and uh, diplomatic. So I think when if any of such information as a lawsuit came from SCACO, it, it may have been an honest mistake, assuming that we're going, to, we're going to take the two routes at the same time. Yes. Okay. There was no intention for people that it's a lawsuit. Because so I at, the time, at the time SCACO put out that information, we had not even signed the retainer agreement. Yeah, but after we signed the retainer agreement, that's when we had broader discussions about strategy. And that's when we decided to go diplomatic first. Okay, so I make it clear to my viewer. By the time all these messages were popping out about lawsuit, they hadn't signed the retainer fee. So right now, people should go home with the notion that we have the two options, the lawsuit and the diplomatic offensive. If you want both, give us money. Am I correct in saying that? Yes. But because there is no money, they choose the diplomatic offenses route because it's the better option between the two. Not that both is not need of them. It all depends on money. So if before you go out there and start castigating anybody for saying lawsuits, please bring money. We can do both. That's what, from what I understand from Dr. Julius today is, there is still option to do that, but all we need is money. And we say money and money and money in everything in this struggle. So please drop your questions if you want me to ask him. Well, NS is 
ask the question that doing to educate the people about this lawsuit and everything's capac especially how much money do we have how do people get to find out how many people have contributed for example how many people register for citizens levy how much money is left how much money is spent how that is information uh, by doing what we're doing now uh, i kind of gave a, a brief <clears throat> an approximate uh, range of figures about the total collections, uh, total uh, uh, spending, and the net in the account right now. Uh, in terms of specific line by line deposits and uh, and uh, disbursement, it is something that I mean nobody wants to put their account on the website. So, serving Cameroonians who have, who have organized themselves in groups, for example, serving Cameroonians in Boston, do have copies. So, Scapa prints this account and gives them. Uh, the account uh, details, like the account statement, is shared with the SCACO uh, committees, committee heads. So, the different organs, uh, I believe, if the head of Southern Cameroonians in in the UK or in, their, in every group request for this thing is going to come in an email, then they will share it to their people in the meetings. But it's not something you want to put on WhatsApp, for example. Okay. In terms of the number of people who have registered, uh, I, I will encourage you to invite the webmaster for this uh, website uh, to give us details on that because I'm also curious to know. Okay, so now everyone knows that um, from what we've heard today, just to touch back on what he said, we SCAPAC has received close to $100,000. They've paid bills here and there. They've put 35000 down as down payment for the for the diplomatic offensive, which that money hasn't been used. I think in his name is Terry Akopo is saying here that they've only used three thousand six hundred dollars from the SCAPAC account or the money that was saved. For the retainer, the retainer, the retainer fee. fee. So only three thousand six hundred has been given to Foley Hawk. So we still have about three thirty one thousand four hundred in the retain in the retainer fee, yes. In the retainer fee, still. That's different, different from the SCAPAC account. Different from the SCAPAC account. That one is in the escrow account. Okay, so so the escrow account still has thirty one thousand four hundred dollars left. They've only paid fully hawks three thousand six hundred dollars for the work they've done since the retainer was signed up till now. Please, can we know just a bit of the work that they've done for? Three thousand six hundred dollars, please. So everyone is clear. Oh, I thought I already uh, answered that question. Yeah, but uh, the people are still asking. Yes, yeah, so they have to set up a uh, SCAPAC or the articles of organization and uh, articles of operation and all the work and uh, lobbying work at the level of the U.S. government uh, that they have done to secure us appointments <coughs> with the State Department. Uh, also securing appointments uh, with the Senate uh, Foreign Relations Committee, um, all the uh, uh, talking points uh, and uh, negotiations and contact meetings with uh, the Amnesty International and the Human Rights Watch that we're going to meet this week. Um, so. The, those, those, before they do these things, they sit down and, and review uh, piles and piles of documents and videos that we submitted to them. And this takes time for them to look at that and prepare all the, 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 the talking points uh, that we're going to use for these meetings. So they prepare us to go for this meeting. So this, this is why we're paying them for Okay. And we by ourselves, you see, our case for restoration is clear. But why are we still on the annexation? Because nobody listens to us. 
So we need somebody to lobby for us. Okay. So from, from what I've, I've gotten for you, from you so far, it means our case is so clear that we only need, need mostly for now diplomatic and some lobbying. When we fully get our country back, do we have the option of suing the Republic for all these damages that they've done to us in in the past 60, 55 years or since the struggle started do we have that leverage to do that we do have that leverage we have the option to sue them anytime i think we should and i think we will do that okay but it's not as important now as in getting our country back yes uh, so a, a declaration from the icj we to our diplomatic offensive, <clears throat> a comprehensive report from Amnesty International we mm -hmm. add to our offensive. So all these things will add up. Human Rights Watch, mm -hmm. we add, these are organizations with credibility. However, to go through the legal process at the ICJ is time consuming and very costly. But to arrange a meeting with Amnesty International is way less time consuming and required a few phone calls and maybe some uh, 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 meetings between uh, Foley Hawk and these organizations for us to have this meeting. So that is a cheaper and a very effective uh, way if I going to do cost benefit so fully help advise us to follow that route first so i'm going to ask the question now on the two uh, parts now you a few people in america are doing all this work with the lawsuit now we have a we have a new governing council are they going to join you guys to continue this work or they will take another another channel why you guys continue with our work now that we have a new governing council the governing council is directing what we're doing okay so this is a policy or this is an offensive directed by the governing council okay. so the governing council is aware of what's going on the governing council decides who attends these meetings. When the governing council comes to the U.S., they will be attending these meetings with these organizations. So the, 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 represent, the delegation of Southern Cameroonians to these meetings next week was picked by the governing council. Okay. So that everyone is... But all, of course, we make recommendations and they... The government council has uh, 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 the final uh, decision as to who attends this. So this is not uh, this is not so Skapak is not functioning uh, legally because fully hard has to have a client an entity registered in the United States. So, legally, fully hard is considering SCAPAC as a client. Then SCAPAC has its uh, allegiance and board members being uh, be decided by SCAPO. So, SCAPAC is not functioning as an independent organization from SCAPO. SCAPAC is functioning as an organ, as an organ of SCAPI. Okay. Uh, the account is the treasury of Southern Cameroons and Southern uh, Cameroons Governing Council is exercising its diplomatic offensive in the United States through SCAPAC. Uh, there's B. Song B here asking that who pays you, Dr. Julius, for all the work that you do? Yeah, in this struggle, in this struggle, 
we have to completely scrap the idea of salary. There is no payment of salary in a revolution. Okay. Any money that comes in has to be used for common good. If we have refugees in Nigeria, we say if we have two thousand dollars to send, we send for everybody. We don't say we're going to pay this person this amount of salary. So all what we are doing here in the United States is volunteer work. We'll be going to New York next week. We pay our hotel out of our pocket. We pay our flight out of is volunteer work. We don't get paid. In the revolution, you have to sacrifice. Okay. That sounds good to me. And it sounds fun in my ears. So why is it that you people are doing all this work voluntarily and we are, we are all encouraging everybody to contribute to this account where it's so accountable? Honestly, all my questions I have in my head have been answered and I'm quite satisfied. If I wanted to ask you yourself, being in the shoe, going to all these meetings, are you satisfied with the work Foley Hawk is doing for representing the people of Southern Cameroon? I am very satisfied. I think uh, the what we have achieved is, you know, for over how many years we've had all these modern organizations, uh, nothing has happened. But we are already penetrating uh, levels of the U.S. government within a few months. Um, I think I'm very satisfied with the work we are doing, and I am 100% confident that we will be free. Uh, Freedom doesn't come in a day. So people the people have to manage their expectations. Uh, it's not going to be two, one, two, three months or uh, Southern Cameroon is going to be free now. It's going to take time because our co the colonial government of the Republic will resist. Mm -hmm. And this is going to take time, but I am 100% confident that we will prevail. Falsehood has never prevailed over the truth. It's going to take some time, but we will succeed. So, so um, I think B song B is still asking that is there an estimated time that people can have in their head? Like, let's say, if we want to say in six months, do you think in six months, in a year, Southern Cameroons will be free? If I was to tell my friend who's been joining me to help me fight this fight, that how long can they? with me to fight this to see results well um, when we signed the retainer agreement that question came up and the fully hard representative there who has had experience in dealing with these issues in international litigation in South Sudan Kosovo uh, kind of estimated that uh, it may take up to like five, five years for the whole process to complete. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be sooner, it could be later. But it doesn't mean things will stay the same for five years. It means at some point, uh, I'm not sure when, a uh, few months, about a year, at some point we're going to gain the momentum to be able to manage things ourselves on the ground uh, and having La Republic coming out down from the high horse and actually listening to some of the things we want. So the whole process, for example, just the time to create a commission for referendum to actually get in a referendum it may take about two years. We want to get to that first. So the first thing is to recognize is for the international community to recognize what is going on. We don't we don't think that is that has really happened. So we have to make sure that it has happened. Go through the chat, the corridors of the United Nations, and we believe that the weight of the U.S. government on that will make it easier. Once we achieve that, I think the rest will be smooth. It's hard for, for me to give timeline, but I'm just going to go by the timeline uh, given by Foley Hawk on the day of the retainer agreement that it may take about five years. But I believe we will be having updates on how things are going. Right now, the update I have, which I think is good, is that we have important meetings with these organizations and these levels of the U.S. government 
We will be updating our people the outcome of these meetings and what the next step is. Okay, I think I think that sounds to me like a great plan, and it gives me encouragement. But I want to know why is it that most of our leaders, frontline leaders, are resisting this? Um, of diplomatic offensive. Oh, I keep hearing it's not going to work. It's not going to work. We need AK. We need A this. We need A that. What is it that is scaring them? Or what is it that is that is not good about this lawsuit? Please be honest with us. Again, there is no lawsuit yet. So it's just a diplomatic uh, offensive. In terms of why these people are resisting, I'm not sure uh, because, uh, as I said, we want everybody to come up with ideas on how to free us. Some of these organizations have been existing for uh, about 20 years. I'm very sure if they had great ideas, they could have freed us a long time ago. Exactly. So what, what I will... Uh, call upon them to do is keep on doing what we are doing as long as it's moving towards the freedom of serving Cameroons. And don't spend your energy trying to discredit another group of serving Cameroonians who are also working on their own strategy. It is waste of resources and time. So I will encourage the AGC and SUI to focus on their own strategy what they think they can do to really to free us if they free us it's good and fine for everybody they should not spend too much time trying to discredit what we are doing okay so i'm going to ask you i'll be wrapping down so if people have more questions they want me to ask please drop it down in the comment section i'll be reading them i'll just ask you a question that's come to my head because it's something that is hot right now on the table it's about school resumption is there any link between the the diplomatic offensive lawsuits and scapac and the school is there anything that can help to prevent schools or to help to delay us, just anything, because people want to know. People are eager about this. Or maybe from your own point of view, what do you think about school resumption in Southern Cameroon? Uh, I'm speaking for myself. Okay. And I think that if we went on strike and resisting uh, the mistreatment of our people, uh, the infiltration of our educational system, our legal system, uh, and in that process, a lot of our leaders are arrested, our children are arrested, uh, detained, or not even arrested, abducted, and detained in concentration camps in La Republic du Cameroon. Then all of a sudden we say, okay, let's go back to school. What about those in jail? Are they not supposed to go to school as well? So I, I think the resistance should continue. Uh, however, uh, the policy on resumption of school and the overall approach on going forward uh, will be coming from the Governing Council and uh, hopefully in the next, uh, uh, next few days to weeks. Okay. Um, Ernesto Atem is asking a question that will SCAPAC fund an arm resistance if SCACU was to go down that route? Uh, every people have the right to defend themselves. Okay. If the government council creates a department of defense, mm -hmm. And there is a request for funds for safety. I believe the funding will still follow the same route. And it's going to be something legal. La Republic cannot consider that fight, uh, supporting terrorism. It's going to be a self defense funding. Okay. So everyone can hit, everyone sure have heard that Skapak is, if Skakuf 
was to put to say we should defend ourselves, which is a right in international law, self defense. They are happy to fund this, so nobody should go around saying Skakuf does not support self defense. That is a lie and a big lie, and you've heard it today. So, I'm going to ask you I think one of the last questions I will be asking you is. How do people get updates? Because I think if it's taking too long. I'm going to take some responsibility for it because I'm supposed to be the communication for Skakov. But some of this information I get to find out on the TV like today, which I don't think is right. And I think the people want to be updated at, at every given point on what is going on. Because that is what keeps the fire going. What is the best possible solution to this? Or what can you propose that will all will work for me and work for everyone? For people to get the updates on everything that is going on with, with the lawsuit in terms of the diplomatic offensive that we're doing. Yeah, I think the uh, best way uh, is for all information and updates on the struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, to come from the governing council, maybe through the spokesperson. Okay. Um, however, uh, shows like this, events like this, uh, are also good. Uh, if we can have this monthly uh, to update the people, uh, depending on what uh, your availability and my availability are, and other members of... Uh, other board members of SCAPAC can actually come on as well to explain this thing. But SCAPAC, from the time of its creation, uh, has always uh, updated SCAPAC. And actually, the Secretary General of SCAPAC at the time was is actually an honorary member of the board and has all these updates. Maybe because he was overwhelmed uh, by too much activity uh, to do, and probably did not uh, communicate to the uh, to the rest of the uh, secretariat for the information to filter out. But I think with the new new structure and all three members uh, of the governing council on board and have minute by minute update of what's going on, uh, the spokesperson. Uh, uh, will convey such updates uh, in a timely manner. And by the way, the spokesperson uh, uh, will be part of the delegation uh, and most of the delegations uh, at this, uh, to these different levels of the U.S. government and the international community. Okay. I think from now, if me, I can commit to something, I will be saying that this is the Sunday, so, um, every Sunday show and I think one of the reasons that pushed me to do this show was I re I recognized the gap be in communication between Skaku and the people. And talking to you today has made me maybe a bit proud to know that I chose this show to do. And you're just the first to come. I want to bring uh, just a scoop into the next um uh, guest that will be here his name is robert fondy he's one of the skapak and the uh, fully hot guys he will be here next sunday to talk more from his own perspective about the lawsuit because i've realized that even in in all of this everybody have their own ideologies or perspective to every situation so he will be on this show next sunday to talk about um his own perspective to this lawsuit. I will also be bringing no up loss. Remember, no law. There is no lawsuit. Oh, diplomatic offensive, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will be also no lawsuit yet. Yet, okay. They say no lawsuit yet. I'm sure that is clear. Please, sorry, my tongue. me akosa na kamero no pobia isi. So there is no lawsuit, but there is a diplomatic offensive going on and a lot of lobbying in it. I will also be bringing the heads of other organs in Skakov to come and tell us what they've been doing since the 
or were nominated their names were written on a piece of paper to say they, they owe us a duty to free our country so i'll be bringing some of them to tell us where we go from here or what they've been doing so people are in loop with what is going on so mr julius i've been it's been fun today talking to you man and we talk to you on the phone it's fun to have a day like this out to to talk is there anything in your mind is there anything in your mind that you want to drop or you want to tell our people today in terms of this struggle maybe a word of encouragement because some people are getting tired it's taken some people think it's, it's gone too long is there any encouraging words um the people of Saudi Sudan fought for over two decades and they lost millions of people. We have to manage our and we should know that freedom does not come in a platter of gold. We have to work for it, we have to sacrifice. So far the people are doing good. The resistance must continue. People should not get tired. If if for any reason we fail, we will become the worst slaves in human history. So failure is not an option. Mm -hmm. Let the resistance continue. Kids can go to school when we have freedom. There is no point wasting time and studying infiltrated information and come out without any job everything is given to our public even right at the university of boya southern Cameroonians have to translate notes from french to english mm -hmm. so what 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 kind of school did uh, are they tired and want to go back to so this resistance has to continue people have to be strong and they should know that freedom doesn't come in a day the reason why we are having the ears and that we are picking steam here is because there is something happening on the ground. If things come back to any near normal or uh, La Republic feels that they have they have regained control of our territory the way they, 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 they had prior to the uh, onset of the revolution, then they will go ahead and make noise that everything is fine. And that may uh, 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 slow down uh, our offensive so the resistance must continue until we eject the colonizers from our territory okay so um, Edwin former has asked the question is there a possibility for SCAPAC to borrow money hmm. um, I am not sure we have, I have never thought of that. Uh, that has not been part of any of our discussions. Mm -hmm. However, it is possible for SCAPAC to raise funds from non Southern Cameroonians and other organizations. So, Fama, I think your question has been answered. For, for me, if I want to talk about a little bit of scap of the few, I've not known you for that long. If I just want to throw a bit of light so people know you, and are you on Facebook by any chance? Uh, no. We don't want thousands of followers. Yeah. You don't have not, questions? No, I'm not. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not big on social media. Uh, the only thing that brought me into this is my passion for freedom. Uh, so I have, of course, a WhatsApp account, uh, uh, but uh, I don't have a Facebook account. Okay, so you guys have heard him. He's not on Facebook, but we promise you that we will be bringing talks like this. People will always come from Skapak and Fully Hog, maybe sometimes to tell us what's going on with the lawsuit, just so people are informed. I think I've come to know that information, especially in this country where we are, people want to know. People ask questions all the time. It's a good thing to ask questions. And in reverse, we should be able to give you the answers. That's why we've created a show like this where people can come drop your questions is that if there's anything 
burning that you have in your mind or you've forgotten something and you think about it later and you want Dr. Julius to still answer your question regarding Sapak and the Foley Hall, no laws, you diplomatic offensive, please set a Facebook page or send it to my um I don't have no number yet, but I'll be bringing up a number. Yeah. But just I, 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 think, I think I would like to, to, to share your Facebook with you. So that's also my own Facebook account. So all the questions okay. can go to you. <laughs> He's and, my and I'll answer them. Okay. <laughs> He's sharing my Facebook page. Okay, you can drop your questions. All the questions I directed to the lawsuit and, and this lawsuit thing. Why did they even say lawsuit, eh? See this too, you know. <laughs> oh, diplomatic offensive. Please don't do like me and be repeating lawsuit, lawsuit. There is no lawsuit for now. But there will be a lawsuit in the future. We need money to do that. Please, I will not end this show by saying people should register, pay your citizens levy. We've grown to the point where, before I will conclude, I will just give Mr. Julius one more chance to say anything that is in his mind that he wants to tell us and then i will wrap up the show for today and we'll continue next week please mr julius you have the floor number one is money 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 scapac is the most guaranteed place you can keep your money if you want to support the struggle it is the only place where collection of money from Southern Cameroonians is transparent and where the decision on how much money comes out is made by at least 15 people. Signature of the check right now to the check, the treasurer and the resident agent, but Skakuf may decide and make it even three to make it even much harder uh, to even write a check. So it is a guaranteed place. It, it's a process. So uh, e even when the, the SCBC request came, they were like almost losing patience that the money is not coming fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's because Kappa goes through that process. We, we must have the request from Skakuf. Mm -hmm. We circulate that request in the board of directors. Mm -hmm. We vote for it, tally the vote before disbursing the money. We follow that process, make sure there's accountability. Okay. Yes. And secondly, no salary. Anybody coming to work for this uh, uh, struggle has to do it volunteer. No salary. Any money that comes in that account will be used for common good. We're not paying any, any money. Number three, resistance, resistance, resistance. We are to fight our way out of bondage. Mm -hmm. It's just that a fight trying to fight our way out of bondage from a monster who is bigger than most other monsters. The government of La Republic du Cameroon is actually worse than North Korea. Is, is the worst government on earth. Unfortunately, the world has not known that, but they will, they will be discovering that in time. Persist. Uh, the people of Gambia, when it was Senegambia, broke away from Senegal. The people of Southern Sudan did not even have their own country like us before joining the rest of Sudan, but they succeeded independent. People of Kosovo, people of Eritrea, why not people of Southern Cameroon? We have been resisting just for six months and people are getting tired. We should be ready for a long fight and everybody must sit up, make your contributions and know that failure is not an option. I'll Thank leave it there and I'm willing to come on anytime. Thank you very much, Mr. Julius. I think I heard everything that I needed 
to hear today and I'll be concluding this show to say it was a fantastic time spending time with Dr. Julius Tabe. He is the chairman of um, SCAPAC board and he works with the Foley Hawk diplomatic offensive team. There is a lot of work that do behind the scenes. But the most important thing that we should not forget, no matter all we do, is that we need money in this struggle. We cannot stress that enough. No matter what we, we talk and no matter how many history we've learned or every all the abuse we've seen on TV, if we don't pay for our freedom, we will never own the outcomes. So we need to donate. Please pay your citizens levy. I don't know how you can sleep at night and see all the blood that has been spilled. And you, it is only $20. People go to the restaurant and spend more than $100 in a weekend. This is $20 that can guarantee see you your identity for life i see some people asking me the question Vena is asking when are we going to be carrying um using our own passport that question today cannot go to dr julius Tabe because that is not his area his area is just money and anything the diplomatic offensive i'll be bringing other viewers on this show who will be answering questions like that so save your questions and only ask the questions that are asked that is on the show. Please, this. And there's one thing I'm going to add. Uh, for those who are saying uh, people should go to school, your response to them is those who are in jail, when are they going to go to school? Exactly. When are they going to go to school? So this resistance must continue. For those who are not really. Uh, comfortable going online to contribute group yourself into communities make uh, collections and mail them you can mail them in your home country from there or in whatever form you can collect this money and do a wire so but whatever it takes you have to we have to keep this going so because Martin Luther said, if you cannot uh, 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 fly, you run. If you cannot run, walk. If you cannot walk, you crawl. But by all means, you have to keep moving. And he also said that to end, when you sit quiet, and allow yourself to be a perpetual to be in perpetual slavery if we have dignity as a people we cannot remain in servitude for eternity ourselves or lecturing somebody else, it's our objective to fulfill our desire to come up with a consensus. And so we will try to do that deliberately and make sure